All right, so uh, we're live. Uh, I apologize for being a little late here. Actually, I've been looking for a tweet that was going to kind of lead into uh, me talking about exactly what I'm doing with this channel and uh, the purpose of this uh, stream in particular. Is um, <clears throat> So I've already mentioned I am, or at Tell Your Son This on Twitter. Uh, he's a writer, I assume, from England. And uh, he's the favorite person I follow on Twitter. Honestly, I could do full streams just going over all his tweets. There was one in particular. I can't find it. It was from a few days ago. But um, it's the whole reason I held this up. Is he had said something along the lines of um, intelligent people um, tend not to, or I don't know if he said intelligent people or wise people or something along those lines. Um, he said that they tend to not... Uh, Oh, sorry, Leroy. Just got going. Um, but yeah, uh, intelligent people tend to not share how they got to where they are, or, or maybe not intelligent, but high status people tend not to share how they got to their point uh, because it's like counterintuitive. It's like, why would I share the secret to my success? Not to say that I'm all that successful. I have a little bit of success and I just like to share it with people, but it's counterintuitive to share how you got to where you're going because one, it takes away from you getting to where you're trying to get to next, but also chances are good. You don't want other people getting to uh, the point you're at because uh, you want to stay there and be alone and be on top of your little mountain. So uh, I am had said that I was looking for the tweet, couldn't find it. That's kind of why I, I'm a little late, but I'm just going to give up on that. Um, but yeah, that's the point is like part of this channel is, um, I have a lot I want to learn. I'm still only 26, but I think I have learned a lot, and I'd like to share that with some people. Uh, it might sound kind of arrogant, but I think it's true, and uh, I, I, I kind of want to get humbled by this channel. I've mentioned before I'd love to get some trolls because I think trolls uh, keep you in check. Oh, we're, we got six people watching. I'd just like to shout out and say that uh, that is my high to this point, so five was my goal I said last time, but... Um, in this, uh, in this particular uh, stream, I'm going to get into the social sexual hierarchy uh, by Vox Day. Uh, actually, I, I forget his background. I think he's a sociologist, and he started a YouTube channel recently called Vox Aversity. And uh, this this uh, uh, video in particular is 17 minutes long. Um, it it uh, He only released it November 9th in 2018, so it's only been up for a few months. But this really kind of changed the way I looked at social... Uh, this is completely from the male domain, the social sexual hierarchy. And uh, that might sound a little weird to, to get into right away. But um, I, I kind of want to pretty much because it's 17 minutes long. And he actually gets really to the point. You can really understand what Vox is saying. Uh, Vox Day. I don't know if that's a pseudonym or moniker. But that's all I know to go off of him. He doesn't have a Twitter. Uh, so I got nothing to plug there. But he's been putting a lot of content and way more content out than I've been doing. Uh, lately, he has uh, the other channel, Darkstream, which he does uh, um, live feeds. And actually, I'd like to do the uh, uh, um, Fox Day Darkstream because uh, he's actually better than mine entirely. But I've been on the Owen Benjamin kick, uh, as you can see by my uh, in the corner here. The current, uh, the la last one by Owen Benjamin, who I've modeled my show after. He did four hours and forty-one minutes, almost five-hour live stream, and I watched the whole thing. Uh, he really got onto some good things and I, I'd like to plug it while it's there in my, uh, up next. But, um, before that, I, I just wanted to uh, share another tweet, uh, just to kind of promote, uh, more people to, um, I mean, I don't know. You can tell I'm a pretty happy guy right now. And it's really because I cut out a lot of bullshit in my life. Uh, like gossip. I used to be a big video game player. I really cut that out of my life almost entirely. And the one thing I want to say is this tweet in the age of the internet, there's no reason not to be an autodidactic An autodidactic means someone who can learn on their own. It pretty much means that you don't need someone to be teaching you something. You can on your own, seek out wisdom, seek out knowledge and just learn. You don't need someone's approval to be like, okay, you've learned this properly, or this is what you need to learn next. You can look for what you're learning next and you can like validate yourself saying, okay, I'm confident that I actually learned this. Uh, you know, he says, take responsibility for your learning, start building your library, read about philosophy, cunning systems, strategy, logic, etc. It's never been easier to become knowledgeable. And that's a great insight that like in this modern era, there's so much information out there. Uh, Wikipedia, YouTube, just those two alone, you could literally, if you apply yourself and you have the right knowledge, not to say that I'm even doing it perfectly. Um, seven people. Yeah. Leroy Jenkins. I appreciate it, man. 
Um, I mean, how about this? 10, 10 will be the next goal. Uh, we'll just keep it kind of incremental growth. Five was like my kind of conservative one. Let's get up to 10 here and uh, lo love uh, seeing you in the chat. So uh, I'll just say let's get to 10. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's just get right into it. I'm going to try not to interrupt Vox, Vox very much, but if I see a point that where I um, or, or someone wants to bring up something in the chat, we can pause it and kind of go over something or maybe I'll just chime in. But it's 17 minutes long and I'm going to kind of just let him go. And obviously that's the thing is you can watch this video again. Uh, the social sexual hierarchy uh, by Vox Diversity, Vox Day is the one who made it. Welcome to Vox Diversity. I'm Vox Day. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the socio-sexual hierarchy. That may sound complicated, and that may sound new to you, but this is something that you know intimately. It's something with which you've been familiar since you were in school. It's something that you have around you at all times, in every organization, in every company, in every social group in which you participate. The socio-sexual hierarchy is how men and boys relate to one another. What you are, how you behave, and what your natural inclinations are likely to be. There are five ranks, and they've been developed from the concept that was originally introduced by the pickup artists. Uh, the early pickup artists, Roycey, Roosh, uh, often talked about alphas and betas. Alphas were men who were sexually successful, men who women were attracted to, men who found it easy to attract women. Betas, in their parlance, were men who were not attracted to women. The socio-sexual hierarchy should not be confused with this, even though it sounds similar and even though we use some of the similar terms. So I'm going to pause you for a second because I think this is kind of the biggest insight I got right off the go here. Um, Whenever I hear people talk about alphas, betas, because actually Vox gets into more than just the alphas. He talks about the alphas, the betas, the deltas, the gammas, and the omegas. The deltas being the most common um, men, like the kind of worker drone um, mentality, I guess would be the quickest way of explaining it. And he says, like, it's there's nothing wrong with being a, a, a delta. Not only that, is like none of these things define your identity or who you are. It's like in certain settings... A person could be an alpha in a majority of their lives, but when they come home, they're the omega to their wife or vice versa. Um, they're an alpha in all their social settings, but when they go to work, they're a gamma, you know, what, whatever. There, there's, uh, there's a little bit of play here, so I don't want anyone to kind of get quickly like, oh, man, this is just some more, uh, uh, um, you know, dating bullshit. It's like this isn't more about dating. This is more about like relationships between men and other men. Uh, men in the workplace, uh, men and women in the workplace, uh, friendships, it, it, it's, it, it gets into that. But the biggest misconception people have is they always think alpha and beta. And the thing is alpha is always good and beta is always bad. And that's the thing uh, Vox really gets into. It's like not everyone is cut out to be the alpha. Uh, and not, a, not everyone should be the alpha in all domains of life either. Um, well, it's very stressful. He'll get into it in a second. I just kind of want to make that disclaimer real quick. It's like, Life is not all about being alphas, and being a beta isn't the worst, uh, and, and we'll just keep it rolling here. Because the social sexual hierarchy brings in social dominance, social hierarchy. It's not all about male-female relations. It's just as much about male-male relations, the internal concepts that tend to govern an individual man's behavior. So there are five major ranks, alpha, beta, Delta, Gamma, and Omega. The top of the hierarchy is the Alpha, the quarterback on the football team that the head cheerleader dates, the blonde bad guy in every 1980s teen flick. He is the guy that the girls want to be with and the guys want to be like. So what separates the Alpha from other men beyond his attractiveness to women is that he is a leader. He is someone that other men naturally want to follow. What he does, they imitate. In when the group is making decisions, his opinion counts for more than others. So there is a natural leader-follower relationship between the alpha male and other men. 
But this is both a responsibility as well as a right. The alpha tends to be much more cognizant of status than other men. He tends to be protective of his status and he tends to be friendly to those who acknowledge his status and he tends to react badly to those he perceives challenges it. With the alpha, as with all these ranks, positives and negatives, pluses and minuses. It's important to understand when you're thinking about the hierarchy that it's not about trying to maximize your position within it at all times. I wasn't about to get into a fucking big dick competition. Sometimes it is a big dick competition. If you're not naturally suited for one particular rank, you're probably not going to be very good at handling the responsibilities if you're put into a role that requires it. So the second rank is beta. All right, so yeah, I think the the big misconception is they started with alpha, and people think that like alphas are this end all be all that uh, you know because you've made it to the top, because people want to emulate you, because people want to mimic you, that you know it's a position to be idolized. But as much as it is a position to be idolized, I think he hit on the head with one word in particular: it's responsibility. Um, there's all eyes on you, and you know if, if you. Um, being an alpha in a particular setting where you're a leader leader at work, where you're just a father in general. And I, I think that's why being a father is so important. I've said that before in my streams is because it automatically makes you an alpha to another. Um, well, I mean, I'll say to father to a son in particular, um, your son is always going to look to you. He's going to mimic you. It's, it, it makes any man who maybe has been a delta, gamma, or omega for most of their lives, or maybe an alpha, or beta, very few times, it makes them an automatic alpha in one domain. Which is really good. Um, I, I think it, it it's good to have a balance of these different roles. And um, yeah, that being said, we'll get right into beta. And uh, that's beta, I think, is the one that gets the worst rap overall. Um, and actually, Vox says here very shortly that the being a beta is actually probably the most convenient. I don't know if he used the word convenient, but uh, I, I'll, I'll let him say it. The alpha are the leaders. The betas are the lieutenants. The betas tend to resemble the alphas on the outside, but the difference is they, they lack the ambition and they lack the status consciousness that the alpha has to have. Nah. The beta is almost always going to be found attached to an alpha. The beta likes to be provided with leadership. He likes Roger, to be provided with a vision. <laughs> In some ways, being a beta is arguably the best of the social ranks because it comes with a lot of the privileges of being higher in the social hierarchy. No, 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 there's two O's in Goose. Without all of the responsibilities that fall to the alphas. This is why in corporations, you often see- I actually never realized how much of an alpha beta relationship there was in the movie Top Gun. This is actually the third time I'm watching the social sexual hierarchy and being my third time watching, I've been able to watch the body language of uh, uh, Mav and, is Maverick and Goose? Yeah, Mav Maverick and Goose. Uh, and, and it's really interesting just to see the eye contact, the body language uh, used in the movie because Goose is a beta. Uh, he's, he's the perfect beta. He's like proud to be following Maverick. He's proud to be Mav's friend. Uh, Maverick is the alpha. He takes responsibility. He's the one who um, takes charge. Uh, and he's also a good alpha. He, he, he takes the lead and doesn't mind taking the responsibility even when it's not necessarily his fault or when it is his fault. He, does, he doesn't he uh, does default it. Um, and yeah, I, I just want to make a note that Top Gun was a great reference. That's why I think Fox does a really good job. And I, I would like to plug just for a second his content's very good and i really haven't digged into it deeper it was just this one was pretty profound and actually i might do this again depending on what people think uh so if you want to chat and just let me know what you think so far i'm going to keep rolling and if this is getting too in detail you just let me know we can stop and uh maybe you could watch on your own and i can get into the next point here uh because i'm not quite sure whether this whole video concept is is the right way to do it or if i should maybe like just show the video like leave it as homework or something for you to watch later and then I can just discuss it. We'll figure it out. So we'll just keep rolling. See such a problem when a alpha leader retires because mm. they frequently try to elevate 
his loyal betas to the former alpha's position, which almost invariably fails because the beta is not psychologically suited to play the same role as the alpha that he supports. Betas actually tend to be fairly friendly people, people that it's uh, enjoyable to be around. They're popular with women. They're very popular with women. Hey, Goose, you big stud! That's me, honey! But not to the extent of the alphas. You always go home with the hot women. All right, thank you, Carol. In general, you're not going to see a wife fretting about the loyalty of her high status beta husband the way that she is almost invariably going to worry about her alpha husband. Take me to bed or lose me forever. Show me the way home, buddy. Betas tend to be very loyal. Loyalty is their defining trait. The thing that you need to be very careful of with a beta, the one area where you can get yourself in a lot of trouble is if you are disloyal either to them. Well, I just happened to see a MiG-28. We do. We do. Sorry, Chris. We. Or even worse, to the alpha to whom the beta looks. They're not only his lieutenants, they tend to be the alpha's enforcers as well. And so when you are in a group, the kind of people who will take you aside and let you know that maybe you want to adjust your behavior a little bit, those are almost always going to be the betas. The third and most common group is the deltas. I chose the name delta to apply to them because they are the most liable to move up or down the hierarchy depending on where the group is. Remember, these hierarchies are fractal. You know, someone who is a alpha in a very small group might only be a delta in a larger group of which that little group is a subset. You know the phenomenon, big fish in a small pond is not a big fish in a big lake, much less the ocean. Deltas are the backbone of society. Deltas are the most important part of the hierarchy. They tend to define the success of the group. They tend to define the smooth functioning of the group. The more that a group or organization caters to its deltas, the stronger it's going to be. These are the guys who get the work done. Deltas tend to pride themselves and their defining characteristic is competence. They don't want to lead. They're not necessarily concerned with making sure that the, the will of the alpha is properly followed. They want to do their job. They want to be respected for doing their job. And what they crave more than anything is respect. Now, unfortunately for society, women are not particularly attracted to deltas. Uh, deltas tend to be the average guy. And, and actually, the I have another short vi uh, video after this that I'm going to play is actually um, by Red Pill Interviews, another YouTube channel that I, I uh, like. Um, a guy who just goes out interviews and he asks girls about the phenomenon of he phrases it as alpha fucks and beta bucks. Uh, and he does actually, it's, it's, it's ironic that I chose it because he goes off the the one or the other, the black or white approach to there only being alphas and betas. But I think it applies more to the delta. Um, and well, he's kind of explained the fractal idea that it's, you kind of fall into any of these categories in different social groups and it doesn't really define who you are. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the red pill interviews gets in the concept of the alpha being the short term a relationship, the guy that you're just trying to hook up with. And he's asking uh, young girls, he, I believe, a uh, uh, red pill interview, I forget the guy's name, uh, Alex something. He um, get he asks uh, girls coming out of a concert. And so I, I thought it was a good environment to be asking those kind of questions. Or maybe this is the one that I don't, I don't, I don't recall. I actually watched a couple of his uh, interviews. Uh, and then he asks, he's like, uh, the betas being the providers, the ones that, uh, hold on, someone's calling me. But I'm going to let the video play. I don't know who's calling me. And of course, as we know, due to hypergamy, women tend to be less than entirely satisfied with average guys. One of the biggest achievements of Western civilization has been the institution of monogamy, preventing the alphas and to a lesser extent the betas from hogging all the desirable women. Monogamy, one man, one woman, one husband, one wife, is an excellent way of ensuring that deltas are able to marry and raise families. And this is absolutely critical for the sustainability of a stable society. The harder it is for productive 
reliable deltas to engage in successful relationships with women, the more unstable the society is gonna be. This is why polygamous societies are intrinsically less stable than monogamous ones, because unhappy deltas. I think that's a huge point right here. This is kind of the crux of a lot of what I've been uh, trying to talk about with the gender uh, differences in the ways that um, looking at the way our society is moving as opposed to what a traditional family, what traditional society used to uh, about, uh, uh, base things off of. That um, I think kind of what he's alluding to is the fact that um, we're moving to a, a hypergamic, I, I know hypergamy is the, the topic, where women only float their attractiveness, what they're attracted to, to the men at the top. The alphas, and by this definition, also the betas, because this is a, the beta in this definition is still a, a, a high status position. It's just a lower tier of the high status. But it's really affecting the delta men, the men who, who do have a good living. They do do a good job. The thing is, they just don't have the status in the way society is now um, defining what status is. A man with an Instagram he keeps up on and things such as that. I, I really don't know the details of it. I really just wanted to kind of apply the fact that things are changing. The era back when all a man needed to do was be able to provide for his family, uh, protect his household, uh, be a loyal friend, be a loyal husband, be a loyal father, is kind of shifting. And, and not entirely. There's still It's still there. I don't want to... I'm, I'm not some naysayer. Um, I, I do believe that things are on the right track. I am a glass half full guy. But I am also looking to the horizon and I see trends that worry me some. And I just feel it needs to be highlighted a little bit to, uh, one, for guys to know what's coming and adapt um, accordingly because I you know can't tell you exactly how to live your life just know kind of what I see and uh, adjust accordingly but also for women to know what men are dealing with and maybe ease up a little bit on your expectations or maybe look more for the future and less on the on the short term so with that being said let's get back into where Vox was talking about uh, um, uh, deltas are not working away competently at building the infrastructure of society. Now, the fourth rank is in many ways uh, the most oh, the gammas, yeah. intriguing and troublesome one. And this is the gamma. The gammas tend to be more intelligent than the norm, more sensitive. They tend to be more introspective. Now, this all sounds positive, and there are definitely positive traits to the gamma. You got a problem, friend? But the problem with the gamma is that the Gamma is fundamentally unsatisfied with his position in the social hierarchy. Gammas often believe that they should be in charge by virtue of their intelligence. And this, of course, tends to make them extremely disruptive forces in any organization of which they're a part. So whenever you see someone causing trouble in an organization, whenever you see SJWs infesting it and, and attempting to force change, on a healthy organization, you can be pretty sure that the men involved are going to be gammas. Now there's a lot of different attributes that we could discuss and I will do a video focusing entirely on the gamma and the other ranks in the future. But the most important thing to understand is that the, the chief characteristic of the gamma is his dishonesty. That, that month, I didn't sleep for 25 days. I didn't sleep what? at all. I didn't sleep at all for 25 days. The gamma is dishonest with himself the gamma is dishonest with others. And even worse, when he is called out. And for the record, I actually really like uh, uh, Jordan Peterson. I read his book. He's really helped me a lot. But apparently Vox Day, and this is why he intrigues me, is part of uh, what Vox, vers Vox, Vox Aversity is working on, is he's actually been uh, really kind of uh, dumping on uh, Jordan Peterson lately. And... While this this just, I guess, is a testament to my personal growth growth in the sense that I used to be very beta in this regard and that I used to put Jordan Peterson on a pedestal like he was this alpha to me, that he was like everything he said was like this divine thing from God that like has been bestowed upon me to better my life. But then I realized I'm like, no, he's just another source of knowledge for me. So when Vox started saying Jordan Peterson's not all he's cracked up to be, I was just like, OK, let, let me hear him out, because I think that's really the best point of view to have for something like this is you can't go into it like everything Peterson says is bond. It's God. It's perfect. Um, if you do, you're definitely a beta. 
because loyalty and, and actually what I'm working on right now, if you see me typing is I'm actually in this video's description and I'm just kind of making notes for each of the uh, focuses of the roles. Um, alpha being status, beta being loyalty to the group. Um, but I was very loyal to the Jordan Peterson group. But the thing is, it doesn't define me. And I think that's one of the issues of the beta is the beta believes that their identity, their personality, who they are is defined by the group they associate with. And when that comes into question, they feel the need to be the lieutenant, the enforcer, and they will fight for the defense of the group. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave that there. And, and I just want to address the fact that uh, anyone who knows me, if they see Peterson in this video, knows that I really put him in high esteem. And uh, it's part of my homework is I'm going to be watching the uh, Vox Day videos on Jordan Peterson. And that's still TBD. I don't know if uh, Vox is maybe taking shots at someone that unfairly, but if he constructs a good argument i'm going to listen to what vox had to say has to say about uh, peterson being wrong or maybe being half true so out for his dishonesty he will usually defend himself like a cornered rat how is that possible the, the, the i'll tell, tell you, you how it's possible you lay in bed uh frozen in something approximating terror for eight hours and then you get up rather than simply admit that he was being dishonest and so what that means is because of that characteristic dishonesty, the gamma also tends to be conflict avoidant and passive aggressive. I was being professional. Uh, he replied weak, conflict averse. So there is a natural rivalry and a natural dislike between alphas and gammas. When you are running an organization or when you're responsible for an organization, the gammas are always the ones that you need to manage very closely because they are the most likely to behave in a disruptive manner, and they're also the most likely to simply melt down and cause problems of an unpredictable nature. Uh, gammas tend to be disliked by women, whereas women are more or less indifferent towards deltas, they actually tend to be somewhat repulsed by gammas. Answer me one question. Yes, you're a total fag. This is very frustrating to the gammas because they actually tend to be the romantic ones. Ten things I love about Jane. Artists. They tend to be the uh, ones who will obsess maybe. over a particular woman and write her poems and fail to understand that the, the strength of his desire for her does not cause her to desire him in any way. You know, introspective is one word for the gamma. Narcissistic might be another one. However, for all their challenges, Gammas are still part of the social hierarchy. Gammas usually do find a woman with whom they can have a successful relationship in the end. The fifth rank is the most tragic and difficult rank. It's the Omega. And the Omega is the quintessential social reject. Excuse me. The Omega is the one Excuse me. who is not even in the game where women are concerned. Okay, that's the last draw. Yeah, whereas the gamma might be the one muttering in his beer to his friend in the corner at the party. Nobody ever even thought of inviting the Omega. The Omega is literally never there. And Omegas tend to creep women out. Just the mere fact of them being around, even if they don't say anything, is often upsetting to women. They're not necessarily incompetent. They're merely socially handicapped, usually in multiple ways. Omegas can be the classic school shooters. If you look at Adam Lanza of Sandy Hook fame, he would be an obvious example of the Omega type. Omegas tend to keep to themselves. They don't tend to have many male friends. They don't tend to have any female relationships at all. You know, most of them live quiet lives, keeping mostly to themselves. Although, as was uh, shown in the movie Office Space, they do occasionally snap. When you hear about the quiet guy who never bothered anyone, who suddenly flips out and burns his company building to the ground, you can be highly confident that you're dealing with an Omega. Now, why do these things matter? You know, why do we talk about these ranks? You know, is it to make the alphas feel good about themselves? Is it to make the Omegas feel bad about themselves? No, not at all. The reason that the social sexual hierarchy matters is because the patterns of human behavior it identifies allows us to recognize, understand, 
and anticipate the behavior of other individuals once we have successfully identified their rank in the hierarchy. Not only that, but you can use the hierarchy to avoid obvious problems in your organization or your group. For example, if you happen to hire a young, attractive female intern, do not assign her to an alpha, especially not if it's a married alpha, because the chances are very, very high that they're going to have an affair. By the same token, you probably don't want to assign a gamma to manage a group of people, especially a mixed group of people, because gammas tend to view power as a chance to make up for all their junior high and high school frustrations. You know, they tend to look at power as a way of getting back at people. And you can see this in practically any of the pieces that have been written by male journalists about the confirmation of Judge Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, being an athlete from an elite prep school, represents the much hated jock alpha to the gammas of the press. And you, know, you can see and read their psychological issues coming out on the page as they attack this guy that they've never met, who's done nothing to them. It's not all ideological. A lot of it is psychological and a lot of it is rooted in these sociosexual hierarchical issues. The more that you develop the ability to identify the traits of your own sociosexual rank, the easier it is to modify your own behavior and optimize your own behavior. It's especially useful when you're dealing with others. You know, I make use of my knowledge of the sociosexual hierarchy on a regular basis in my business relationships. I know that I need to be careful about inadvertently challenging an alpha. I know that I need to make sure not to say anything disrespectful about an organization for which a beta is working. I also know that when I'm dealing with deltas, I need to make sure that I give them the respect for their competence and their hard work that they need. And with the gammas, I always make sure to not put them in mission critical positions just in case they have a gamma meltdown and elect to declare war on the organization. These patterns of behavior are very, very reliable. They are very, very recognizable. And once you begin to see them, it's very, very difficult to ignore them. I think that if you study the groups in which you are a member and you learn to start identifying who's the alpha, who's the beta, who are the deltas, who are the gammas, what you're going to find is that you're going to be able to navigate the social challenges presented by that group in a much more effective manner. This is Vox Aversity. I'm so, I don't know. I thought that was a really good video. Um, I think that Vox uh, did make a couple uh, statements about how he feels about certain things that I tend to agree with. So, um, I encourage anyone that disagrees with anything maybe I've said or anything Vox said, uh, to, to say something because um, I don't look at criticism personally on this channel as, as an attack on me. Um, I'm putting my ideas out there and I want them to be strengthened. Uh, I want my argument to be stronger. Uh, I want to be a better person. So I just want to open it up if anyone I, I, I think we had four people watching. So thank you for uh, 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 watching. So I want to open up for any questions before I got into or anything you want to discuss before I got into this next video here. Uh, and then I'm going to wrap things up with a quick 10 minute uh, about talking to girls about how they feel about the alpha beta uh, kind of differences, which I found, you know, it's only one batch of case study interviews. But I thought it was pretty cool, especially in contrast to um, listening to what Vox had to say. Um and then also, if you did want to mention about how I'm structuring this uh, with the whole playing a video and then me having my take on it, I like it. I'm doing it this way because um, of all the podcasts I've watched, I'm doing this because this is the way I would want to consume information. Uh, if anyone has like a better way of doing it or maybe a way of me restructuring it, I am very open to that. So. Um, I know there's a bit of a delay, so I'm going to kind of hold off just a second or two in case someone did want to say something or, um, and then, uh, in the next 30 seconds here, I'm going to start the, uh, next video and then we'll wrap it up.
And then also, if you want to chat in general, like once I get the video going, you can always I'll, I can always pause, and if there's a great point, I can mention it. Or even uh, if you watch this after, I do want to address uh, if you comment uh, watching this video after it's been posted. I am get notifications directly in my phone. As long as I'm not completely busy, I plan to get back to you. So uh, let's get started with the uh, interviews. They don't necessarily mean to hurt somebody, though. They just... I don't know. I don't think, I don't think men have bad intentions sometimes. They make bad decisions. I don't know. I think it depends on the man. I think anyone has particularly bad intentions. It's like saying people are born evil and not. They just choose to make bad decisions. I guess so. Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Alexander Grace with Redbill Interviews. I'm outside uh, the Origin concert here in Perth, Western Australia, and I'm going to try and get some interviews about the Red Pill concept of Alpha Fox and Beta Bucks. In the Red Pill community, they have a saying that says Alpha Fox and Beta Bucks. What is meant by this saying is that women's sexual strategy is dualistic. They have two different goals when dating, and it's important to understand which one is being pursued when she's flirting with you. On the one hand, she's biologically driven to secure the highest value mate possible. Yeah. Evolution has crafted her to have sex with the highest value alpha male she can and ideally have his children. However, on the other hand, she's also guided to secure a mate who's dependable, someone who's like a good provider for her and her children. This phenomenon is known as beta bucks. The red pill community always advises men to be conscious of whether or not the women they're dating sees them as an alpha male with whom she'll have highly passionate sex or a beta male provider who'll be less sexually exciting but more dependable in the long term. Any okay. thoughts? Um. Before we get into her thoughts, I did want to make one thing. Uh, the, the point of both these videos is um, for for you know anyone who watches, it's like whether you're a guy or girl, it doesn't matter. Obviously, this is more tailored to the male side of things. Um, <clears throat> but the whole point is for me, I learned more about where I stand. Um, having the humility to th know that I've had gamma meltdowns before, knowing that I've had beta provocations where I've started fights or, you know, arguments for the, because I was being beta, uh, to understand that at the end of the day, most of the time in most scenarios, I'm just a Delta, uh, to most people, uh, knowing that I've had phases where I intentionally was Omega and on my own. And then, uh, knowing that, uh, sometimes you need to buck up and, uh, uh, become the alpha every now and then, uh, suck it up, be, uh, you know, be the man people want you to be. And that, that's to say that women can't, I, I think all this knowledge is, I, I, you know, I'm Taoist. I look at things as like the ideological masculine, the ideological feminine. That's not to say that women, women can't learn all these lessons as well. Learn to, uh, 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 learn what the men are doing so that you can fall within the male hierarchy, especially if you're trying to work in a, in a, a, a you know, male, female cohabited workspace, understand what the men are dealing with and take a page out of our book and do it better. I, I'm all for it. You know, just, uh, understand what we're doing and don't be completely oblivious, and naive to it and, uh, throw the whole world into chaos, which happens sometimes. So let's, uh, hear what some of these ladies have to say regarding the alpha bucks, beta bucks phenomenon. Yes. Uh, if guys could be more clear, that would be a lot more helpful. <laughs> I think most guys just don't understand. I love sex. <laughs> Take a blue pill. Yeah, no, Daddy, get a dirty ass vibe from it, bro. Drop yeah, a couple of fingers. That's pretty true. That's the shit, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're done. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, ladies, let's go. Are you saying, like, like someone who's, like, better looking and stuff like that, you'd go for them, or is it, like... So someone who's, like, really good looking and, yeah. you know, like, a leader of men, an alpha male, he's the kind of guy who you're going to have, like, a, a highly passionate sort of he fling with. Sure. Worthy contribution, bro. But what you're also going to do is also find someone who's a little bit less boring because he's going to be a good husband and father, like, later on. You know what I mean? I don't really have any thoughts on that, eh? I feel like a long-term... Yeah. Partner should be dependable. Way too you much makeup on these two. With, and you want them, I guess. I mean, I know they're going to concert, really but that's like just my two cents. Old school, but to provide, even though like I am a modern woman and I will have a job and I'll provide for family as well, but you also want someone to connect with that and also do the same for you. That sounds generally accurate as a whole. Like, I mean, there would be some that are actively trying not to date though. So what category would they be in? Mm, some kind of unknown third <laughs> yeah, category, just, I guess. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like monks, right? <laughs> well, I guess so. Or just like the generally asexual. <laughs> just aren't interested, Yeah, you they're know? becoming a big group, those guys. <laughs> well, we're starting. I'm starting a trend. Come on. Okay, right. <laughs> you like someone, you go for them straight up. Yeah, that's Thank it. You, you get it. I guess so. 
saying it's not as black and white as that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Do you think the phenomena of alpha fox beta bucks is real? That women do have a dualistic sexual strategy? No, yes. It's kind of fun. You can hear yes. the the dude. That's true. I would, I would I just want to make a quick that dude chiming in is being very gamma. He understands that the women are in a conversation with another man, which by default makes the man talking, interviewing the alpha, and the women. This is just sociologically the beta. They're the ones responding, um, and so he is being the gamma because he is seeking out validation. He's choosing to chime in and, and uh, interrupt because he doesn't feel included in the game. You actually hear it a few times with that, that last group of girls here that there's one guy who just keeps chirping around. And actually, at the end of the video, I think he pulls them away just because he doesn't want to be not included in the group. He's It's ironic that in the girls actually engaging, and this is kind of an interesting interaction that I want to bring up, is the girls are interested in the interview. They want to participate. They want to be polite. They want to discuss. And therefore, they have created their own little social structure temporarily. And this guy might be an alpha. He might be the one leading them around this concert. He might be the one they end up having sex with, if you want to consider that his form of validation. But um, he is choosing to do it in a very sly way that makes him a gamma by interrupting. And uh, I, I think at the beginning of the video, he's like, I like sex in his Australian accent. That's him just trying to subvert what's going on in the video here. So I just wanted to kind of use the lens that we just went over and kind of explain that, that little interjection. Sexual strategy? No, yes. It's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's true. I'm going to be honest. Yes. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Women are smart. Yes. I, I personally, I do like the alpha male... But long term, I would go for the beta. Is the word? Beta male. Yep. Beta male. I think so. Yes, absolutely. Because there's the women that just want to have babies, and there's those that just want someone to look after them. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Mum lets me borrow the iPad too. <laughs> oh, is it? Wow, she really thought that was an impressive burn. Are you aware of personally dividing the men you meet into alpha males for short-term relationships and beta male providers who are better suited for long-term relationships? Probably not that clearly, but on some level, yeah. No, 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 no. I'd actively avoid... That girl just is not being honest with herself is the argument I'd make. I, I think actually she was getting red pilled at, at that moment in the video and she's like, oh shit. I, I think because she realized the reality of the situation and she hadn't thought it out, which is actually a very smart way. She just said, no, 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 no. Because she's, I, I think she was just saying no because she's thinking. She's like, man, is this what I do? And it's, it's a really honest, honest reaction, but eh, I thought it was kind of funny relationships so I don't know that I would have fit into either category <laughs> yeah. by the way that last girl this uh more I guess butch looking for the lack of a better way of explaining it she is definitely an alpha like alpha female whatever the hell that is she just can't she doesn't mind saying her opinion she doesn't backtrack she just goes out and says it respect actually she makes some of the best points throughout this whole video so I just want to take a second and be like you nailed it. You nailed it, girl. Category. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you still getting yourself into? A lot. Who would be? Go <laughs> away. Oh, so annoying. There he is again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I think so. There's definitely men that you like see and pass by in life because you're like they're not long term, and that's it. But they no can be the short term. Thing. That's fine. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with them being the short term. There's no first straight route. All right. What he's saying is they serve one purpose, and once that purpose is served, they're not exactly long term. Yeah, but I feel like you know if someone eventually you'll know if someone is long term. Who would be more sexually attractive to you, an alpha male or a beta male? Me, I'd also punch the head in. Um, probably a beta male to be honest. A male provider. Yep. Someone that's yeah good for me. Beta. You know, for long-term relationship stuff, they'd be better. Alpha male. Oh, Beta male if you want long-term. Yeah, long-term. I do think it's ironic, just in that little outburst there, that all the women across the board are pretty much saying beta. Uh, and I, I think this is a really good demographic because these are girls coming out of a concert, so they're a lot younger. But they all, you know, once he structures the argument, um, they all agree that the beta male, in this defining way of structuring it, 
the provider, the stable male, which I look at as more the long-term view versus the short-term view, uh, most girls agree. They prefer the beta, the long-term view overall. And I think it's ironic right here that the guy's like, alpha, alpha, alpha. Because that's like, guys, we're like, we, we think women want short-term because we want the short-term girls. But in reality, it seems like a majority of the girls, uh, although they're chasing alphas in the temporary while they're hot, while they got their bodies, they uh, are, are, are um, definitely looking to the horizon. They definitely understand reality, and, and, and they know what they want in long term. So I just wanted to – it's an interesting juxtaposition. The girl's talking about the fact that they understand they want a beta provider, and uh, the guy's shouting alpha while the question's being asked, and he's not even the one being asked. I'm definitely a beta, but like let's say right now, obviously go for the alpha. I guess an alpha oh, male. Oh, looks like I lost all my viewers. Uh, just down to one now. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> this nice might be a difficult bold. topic. <laughs> How many more questions are there? Uh, three. Are they long? You can bail if you need to. Yeah. Okay, right. go. See, do you think men would rather be the alpha male who has short-term flings with many women or the beta male provider who has a committed long-term relationship with one woman? I think most blokes would prefer alpha, but maybe as they got older, they'd prefer beta. First one. First one. Lots of flings, yeah. yeah. 100%. Oh, I can't speak for men. Really? There's studies that say that cheating isn't necessarily a bad thing, which I don't particularly agree with, yeah. but like they still exist and actually do serve some purpose in their I think, research. Yeah, I, I agree with that actually. Yeah. Mm. That Not to say that all men don't want a long term relationship, there is no doubt there. But, like, be realistic as well. Yeah. I think deep down they want the beta, but they'll say the alpha. Do you know why? Like, any guesses? Um, mainly if they're around other males to try and seem <laughs> <laughs> like they're one of those guys that just picks up chicks all the time. Well, who would you rather choose as a provider for you and your children, the alpha or the beta male? Beta. Obviously. The first one. Wait, not the alpha male, no, the other one. <laughs> yeah, the sure. other one. <laughs> uh, the alpha male is the hot guy, beta oh. male is the um, one that provides. Gives you I think these two girls are the youngest out of the group, and I think it's interesting that they keep referring to the alpha as the hot guy. And I think that's kind of a very blurred line. Obviously, you can have a very attractive beta man. Uh, the man, I, I think it's more demeanor than it is the, phys, the, the physical side of things. And I think it's just they're showing their kind of immaturity, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way. It's just they're younger. They don't have as much experience. So to them, the probably in their world too, um, the alphas of the high school domain, they're probably either still in high school or just coming out. Uh, the alphas are the physically attractive guys because guys haven't had a chance to um, refine their talents, get into a career, X, Y, Z. Um, and so for them, they don't really know. I guess for them, the beta archetype is just fathers. Uh, so I just kind of want to bring up that irony that or it's not really ironic, but uh, the difference in the age group uh, of this particular couple of girls. I need some providing. Yeah. 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 Probably provide. Bad habits. <laughs> Beta. Beta. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> what can Alpha provide if they're just like <laughs> hot? Yeah, yeah, and a dick. <laughs> like, a dick, yeah. who, who cares if you're attractive and you can't provide for anyone? If you're just going to go from job to job. Look at this dude. I just can't. <laughs> like, I, I just need to take a moment. I didn't. I think I kind of noticed him the first time I watched, but like. Yeah, let's just watch this one. Right? And a dick. Like, <laughs> who, who cares if you're attractive <laughs> and you can't provide for anyone? If this you're is, just going to go from job this to is job. Such a pathetic, and, like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're in for the next one. Yeah, if you can't provide uh, and you can't, you know, okay. have a job that you love and you can't care for me, what's the point of having that person? Um, Stay in your lane, bro. That's the only advice I'd give. None. If I was to raise children, I'd do the male free. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. Why? <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess it's more like because I personally am not looking for a partner to raise children with. If I was going to yeah, have she's children, never met a good guy. Not to say I, to I would be the one and for her. It's really irrelevant I guess what the genes are. The first, or, the first uh, <laughs> assertion. So what kind made, of behaviors or characteristics? I, I think she's very feminist, probably because she's had a lot of bad interactions with guys. That's just a guess. Would a man display for you to categorize him as an alpha? An alpha, um, outgoing, quite cocky. He takes ten hours to reply. He's well, he's not thoughtful. He's not thoughtful. Being a dickhead, generally. I don't know, wearing muscle shirts. 
egotistical, yeah, um, kind of confident, I guess, is probably one of the big ones. Yeah, confidence. Um, and also, if he would spend more time doing his hair and makeup in a day than I would. <laughs> only They only care about themselves. They don't, they don't have... They don't have any qualities that. Uh... Over here, and can tell you. <laughs> no, yeah, that they just care about themselves. They don't care about what anyone else thinks, and so they don't necessarily or... just care about themselves. They're not necessarily no, self-conceited. They just want to serve their own purposes. Do you think it's wrong for women to categorize men into alpha males and beta males, lovers and providers, and then treat them differently? Um, I reckon. Yeah. I you reckon... can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> I this is another this whole video has been really interesting. I, I do want to highlight her reaction to this rogue dude that she felt comfortable with the interviewer to the point where when the guy went by, she gave him a strange look and uh, then smiled back because the strange look is whatever. She felt comfortable enough to be like, we both agree that that was weird. So she gave him a strange look. But then she looks back at the guy and smiles at him. Which would make me think she's a beta girl because she wants to make sure everyone is happy and everyone agrees. I'm gonna play it back real quick just to see if uh, really just care about maybe I'm over psychoanalyzing, but that's what I do. I have so much fun with it. About themselves, they're not necessarily self-conceited. No, they just want to serve back. their own purposes. Do you think it's wrong for women to categorize men into alpha males and beta males, lovers and providers, and then treat them differently? Um, I reckon. Yeah. I you reckon. can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> see she she was creeped out by him not only acknowledged that she was creeped out to the interviewer but then also felt the need to smile and be polite probably a really nice girl but an alpha girl would have definitely made him feel uncomfortable just want to because I, I that's another topic i want to get into another video uh i talked to a few female friends of mine i think they're a little apprehensive being on the show in general one it being so small to just the idea of being a one-on-one -on, -one on a podcast i can understand that's kind of weird but i really do want to talk about femininity because i have way too much red pill side of things and i do want there to be a balance i don't want this to be just uh, a, a toga party you know rah rah men type deal because that's just what i know i'd like there to be some balance here so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess if you're going to categorize them based off nothing, then that would be wrong. But if you're looking for a certain type, then that might be easy to cut to the chase rather than leading people on and, you know, pretty much wasting everyone's time in a relationship that no one's interested in. <laughs> yeah, men do the same. I don't think fair. we do it intentionally. It just kind of happens. I so do it intentionally. I, see, I don't. That. I've never done that. I've you always do it. no. I, Maybe I, not consciously. You yeah. Do it. It's not. Yeah. It's not conscious right now. At all. Do you see Connor as long term? Yeah. See, just Ooh, her well, friend just called her out. I, <laughs> I don't know well, who Connor is, but when I first meet someone, I'm just not like, oh, this is someone I will just have a fling with tonight, or this can be long term. It just develops into what it is, and that's all. What advice would you give a male friend who's sick of being seen as a beta male provider? <laughs> Grow some balls. That's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's a good thing. Well, I'd give advice. I'd like just. She's say. a nice girl. I would love to know her information. That she's, well, she's my type for one. But I think she's kind of naive. She, I don't think she understands the way males work. And I'd love to teach her because <laughs> I think I have a decent understanding. Uh, having uh, butt heads with too many alphas, a good part of my life. <laughs> uh, I think she thinks guys are a lot more like women that they're. I, I don't know. I'm completely overgeneralizing, so I'm just going to back out of that point. But I just wanted to say that she has a, a very idealistic view of the world, which I really appreciate out of people. Smile. Have a sense of humor. Personality, maybe. I don't know. Get out more. Yeah, man up. You know, maybe they're just doing the whole thing where they think they're friend zone, but you actually kind of need to say something before something's going to happen. So yeah, just man up. I guess hang in there and stay true to yourself because if you're looking for the right kind of girl, then you shouldn't have to adjust your personality to seem like a man that you're not in order to get that. Otherwise, really, you're just faking the whole thing and really, what's the point? Um, you need to have confidence. Talk to Andrew. But if, I was just thinking that. Yeah. My friend is very beta. 
um, wants to be seen as alpha and I just say you need to have confidence you need to care about others and just be who you are because you can't you know it's hard to be categorized into something but you just need to love who you are this sounds so <laughs> this is very cliche but love who you are <laughs> it, that's one thing yeah. is I, I that's the end of the video so I'm gonna wrap that up there but um, I, I, I do think, I say that's so cliche, I say that very often, but I think the problem with cliches is people glance over them, but there's normally a lot of good knowledge and things that are cliche. Um, I think it's very unfair for people to be like, oh, I've heard that before. It's like, well, yeah, you heard it before, but obviously someone's telling you it again because they don't think you learned your damn lesson. So uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, I had a lot of fun with this. Um, I hope uh, someone learned something from it as well or um, had had uh, four viewers for a good bit of the video, uh, had three consistently. So thank you very much. Um, I, I'm going to just kind of stay, stay on for a couple minutes here in case you wanted to say something. But uh, there's a bit of delay. So um, if you'd like to hop off, hop off. I just want to be the last one to jump off in case anyone wanted to say anything. Um, any questions, any uh, maybe retorts, maybe I was wrong with something because this is me just trying to put out my best uh, uh, knowledge. And um, I think that's really kind of a Socratic way, the, the, the best way uh, everyone grows going forward. And um, I, I do think, I, I do want to address this. I think simply by making this podcast in general, it definitely puts me in an alpha role. I'm the person who's speaking. Um, the comments are definitely not, it's not an equal footing for uh, people to be uh, um, pr presenting themselves. And so I, I do think it's a very fair structure the way I'm trying to envision it in the future is that uh, I create a community hopefully where people can engage in the chat. And then uh, I, I want it to be fair to the point where uh, if people start uh, reliably and consistently being in the chat and maybe there's uh, some different points of view that if they really disagree with something, it's not like I'm some dictator that can just... Uh, um, shut them out or tell them to shut up if they really want to explain their point of view i would encourage them to uh skype me be on the show and then we're in equal footing it's uh um you know we can see them we can hear them they can talk over me they can it, it'll be pretty fair so um that's what i'm looking towards in the future making this pretty kind of democratic and uh just having a having a fun time with it um uh i'm gonna do another broadcast tonight uh, I got my Browns jersey on. I'm going to go watch some uh, football. I think we got the Rams and Saints playing a little later today. And then we got the Chiefs and the Patriots. So got a couple of fun fo uh, football games to watch. And, uh, well, everyone uh, have a great Sunday. It doesn't look like we're going to have any uh, chats. I, it says one watching that's probably just myself. So, um, yeah, this is the Michael Pulowski experiment. And uh, have a great day.